Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, we are trying to install an 11 millimeter pump head assembly with a high lift TDI rotor on my VW 1.6 liter Bosch VE pump. So right now, this diesel fuel pump here has a nine millimeter pump head by upgrading to this 11 millimeter pump head, it's gonna deliver more fuel to my car. Not only that, but by upgrading to this, we're gonna get more fuel at a shorter injection duration. I've been using this pump, or currently it's a naturally aspirated version, which doesn't have this top boost proportioning mechanism. On my current setup, with the nine millimeter, what I'm finding is I have its, my settings on the car right now such that the pump is doing as much as it can to get as much fuel in as it can. But what that really means is we're extending fuel injection duration super long. So my EGTs right now are really high, even though I'm getting a lot of fuel and a lot of boost. Hopefully a way to mitigate some of that EGT. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade the pump head on this guy right here. So here I'm holding a pump head. So normally right here is plugged, right here is plugged and these four slots, well, holes, are the fuel injection output. So pressure comes out of these four ports and goes to my four cylinder engine. Now, if we look inside, on this side we have the uh, cam plate, so that you can see this is wavy. There's a set of rollers that pushes on this that then compresses the spring mechanism accordingly to the size of this cam plate. Okay, so now there's this spring mechanism, which is what keeps the plunger from not returning. We're gonna go ahead and take that off carefully. And by taking this off, I'm gonna have to do some quick disassembly, but this is the plunger itself. So you can see that there's four ports. There's one in the middle, which this port right here is what receives the fuel. Could be completely wrong on that, but, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure fuel is in front of this and this compresses it and that is what makes it jet out of these other four ports, which then feed the corresponding ports on the car. Remember, this gets compressed and also this collar here, that collar slides like so to, and you can see it right there. See that port? That is the fuel injection event basically release mechanism. So when the collar is here, the pump keeps injecting fuel, but when this collar gets pulled back, it allows fuel to escape the mechanism. So now that goes all in like so. And I want you to look at the front of the pump now because there's no cover on it. You can see there's that end of the plunger we were just looking at. That's my understanding of it. I think there's a decent potential I got some of the fuel delivery points wrong in their exact locations, but that is fundamentally how it works. Uh, at any rate, this is an 11 millimeter head with a high lift cam plate, which means when we put this in, the car is going to party for sure. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking this other pump apart. I have not done this before, so what I know for a fact I need to do is take off the four bolts on the face of it that hold its nine millimeter head on, but then I may need to take the top of the pump off in order to hook the collar up correctly, but I, that seems to be the case, but we're gonna find out. Here we go. Okay, to get this started, we got four T30, well, one, two, just kidding. One, two, three. No, I was right. <laughs> we got four T30 Torx heads to take out of the pump head to remove that. And then there's two, it looks like uh, five millimeter Allen keys to take this plate off after these two go. So I'm gonna take these two off first and then those two and then the pump head itself. I don't know how I'm gonna get this out. Figure that out later. <laughs> So there is spring tension behind this because, again, there's springs that are pressing all this together. I just undid this though, and the two shorter heads go opposite and outside of the plate and the two thicker heads go through the plate. And when you look at them 
they are different lengths, so they do have specific positions. I guess here goes nothing. Just kidding, that's as far as I can get it. Now, this is probably not what you need to do, but we're gonna try prying a little bit. All right, it's exactly what you need to do. Also, it's full of diesel. Should have known. Okay, okay, okay. All right, well, that wasn't too bad. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to approach this process, but uh, seems like we did okay. Now looking down and into the pump, this right here is our lever assembly. Here's our other cam plate. I will compare all these parts in just a second. Compare cam plates and we'll compare plungers. Okay, so here are the, uh, the cam, cam plates. Just need to make sure I get the orientation correct, but see if you can uh, compare the difference there. It's pretty obvious. I'm having trouble holding it at a weird angle here, but can you see? This one's quite a bit taller for what it is. Okay, and for comparison, here are the two pump heads. So quite literally nine and 11 millimeters. So what we're changing at the end of the day is the end head diameter and how far it travels. That's it. Okay, that made hit its mark. There's two prongs it's got a seat on, and the other thing is to check which way, if you're doing this too, check which way it came out, because if you put it in 180 degrees, then when you go to time your pump, your pump's gonna be 180 degrees off of its timing mark. This is the part where I wonder how wrong I'm about to do this. My apologies. We gotta get this hole lined up with that knob and we gotta get this tooth lined up with that knob. And I need to steal these two wheel springs and put a gasket on it. Okay, one sec. And I need a little more precision than that. Okay, I got the collar where it's supposed to be. So now it's a question of is the rest of it where it's supposed to be? I don't know how to tell. I guess easy way to tell, turn the pump. Yep, that's working. Okay. I uh, half pulled it apart a few times to peek inside and I, th I think we're good to go which is a bold statement, but always a bold statement to proclaim you are good to go. But I'm gonna check. I'm gonna get this half tight so I can still turn it a bit, and then we're gonna see that everything's working okay, and then I'll finish tightening it. So. All right, I'm gonna tighten it a bit more and see if it gets any better but I think I need to open this back up. That feels kind of choppy. I doubt you want it to feel choppy. It should feel like a build in resistance, which is us turning that cam. And then Okay, it actually does feel better. So it's actually getting smoother the more I tighten it, which the more I think about it, that makes sense since there's little rollers that are in there. They probably need a decent bit of pressure on them to feel okay. Do one more check here. Yeah, that feels good. That feels like a pump I'm used to. Okay, so here's the solenoid pieces. Up here, this is a uh, hot 12 volts and this grounds it. And this, I assume, it moves back and forth. And this here is a plunger mechanism. 
with a tip that seals into the cavity below it. I've never actually swapped over this 11 millimeter head before, as I have said probably several times now. Hans Auto Parts was a huge help. Just, uh, I was able to contact them and they got me the parts I needed and told me what I needed. And this wasn't in here that tight, so I'm not gonna go ape on it. Big wrench, light touches, well, medium touches. So when you take these off the end of a pump head, inside them is a spring and this little guy, and I would be careful, I did this with the head facing up, um, cause this, let me see, get it in view here. This is made of a bunch of little pieces, or at least two, maybe it's just two. But this is the check valve that keeps pressure in the line. So it's very important that these go back in, otherwise the fuel pump would not function. These just drop in the bottom here. So that receives a pulse, it presses up against this spring, against that spring, receives a high pressure pulse. This spring keeps it, keeps it good and charged in there, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And this part right here goes over top of it all to keep it together. Oh my goodness, all right. You wouldn't believe the kind of interruptions that happen in the middle of trying to film something. Just always people stopping in with weird problems. And I don't even have a sign that like says mechanic outside. <sighs> all right, so I just, just, just got the old center of the pump loose. And I can't begin to say in words how hard it was. Well, I, I can, but here it is. And I'm doing this kind of wrong. You definitely need a special tool to hold the three sides, but I found this wrench gripped it pretty nice. But I mean, I was literally like leg pressing, vice has been hammered in place tight. Like this thing did not want to come off. When you go to do yours, if you do, I would highly recommend maybe getting the right tool. But that's only ever a maybe. I just know this is a tool for now I'm gonna need once, which is why I didn't wanna buy it. But this thing is, does not come out easy. It's like it also just seals against the bottom. I don't know why that was so hard to get off. Probably cause I was using the wrong thing and didn't have a lot of leverage. I imagine this is probably a three-sided socket and you put an impact on it and <laughs> comes off no problem. But there we are. All right, inside of this looks like so. Nothing too crazy. Really just a plug with a screw in it. That's it. Special word of caution, there are these very small washers that are easy to not notice that are in existence or not. Uh, they do exist and they go in the bottom, well, top of this check valve assembly. So there's a washer and then the spring. So if you take this out with just the spring coming out, be careful. I almost lost one of my washers to the floor just now. All right, so there you have it. That was actually way easier than I thought it was. I can't verify my results at this time. LOL, that sounds like a legal disclaimer, but I am not going to install this on the car today by any means. But when I do install it on the car and I intend to, we will find out if it works properly or well or at all. Uh, I think it's gonna work well is my personal bet. But there you go, that's how to install a bigger pump head or any pump head for that matter on a Bosch VE pump, the home done way. I'm sure you're supposed to like normally take more of this apart to do it correct, correct. But I mean, I put the parts in there and they definitely all went together correctly. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate you. Have a good day out there.